Yes. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to a very special episode of Partners in Crime. In fact, it's our Christmas special for 2020. Happy Christmas, Partner in Crime. How Happy are you? Happy Christmas to you too, Bob. I love the hats. I see we've um, we both come similarly attired. Oh, you've got yes. glitter on yours. Well, of, of course, I've got glitter. I'm in showbiz, darling. Um, or as what you know, um, Strictly would say, darling. 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 Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, yes, I have got glitter on mine. Uh, my Excellent. hat is. And it's absolutely, we didn't arrange this, did we? We have both no. turned up with silly Christmas hats on them. And why not? This is what it's all about. Uh, hello, everyone. Everyone listening to this. Uh, season's greetings uh, to you from uh, Partners in Crime. Uh, so glad you're listening to this. Um, we've got a fun pack show, uh, lots of information about crime uh, and various other things. And as ever, Mr. Croft has several nice surprises mm. up his sleeve. Do you have your audacity running, Bob? Because I've just remembered to run mine. No, I haven't. Okay. So we're going to have to Excellent. start that again. Let's do that again. Right. We'll be all right. Least... We'll run with it. We'll, we'll run uh, with it. We'll start recording now. Shot? Yeah. Can I start not? recording now? Okay. Let me, get, recording let me get to it. See, this is where it all gets very technical. Uh, <laughs> and it is running... <laughs> Now, can it guess this? You should have um, of... you should have uh, noticed your sound quality improving now, listeners. <laughs> oh, that's very good. I can I can I can hear my sound improving. Oh, well, there we uh, go. Anyway, so I don't have to repeat any of that, do I? No, no, we're going to run with it. We're as professional as ever. You know, we might as well start the the Christmas episode with the balls up. Why not? Have you got coal <laughs> enough coal in the back of the computer? That's all I we have. Do. Yes, we Perfect. have. Perfect. Yep. Um, but now we've got some lots of good news, lots of surprises coming. It's been a hell of a year um, for everybody. But um, yes, I was, I was saying to you before the show, Bob, we've got good news that um, Kobo are um, uh, have agreed to sponsor us again for another year. So you've got another full year of Partners in Crime in 2021, which is excellent. So don't blame um, us, blame Kobo. Blame um, them. They're keeping us on air. Um, How nice of them. That's. I mean, it's incredibly kind of them. Uh, thank you very much, Kobo. Uh, much appreciated. Um, and uh, uh, I hope all our listeners will uh, still be um, uh, getting their books from Kobo. Yes, well, we're very, very proud to have been sponsored by them for uh, four years in a row now. Um, and have also gone one step further this year. They've um, also agreed to give away a brand new Kobo Nia e-reader to one lucky listener. And they're also going to be, um, uh. we'll, we'll tell you how to get hold of that later in the show. And there's going to be three runners-up prizes as well. So well worth entering our Christmas competition. Maybe bag yourself an extra little Christmas present. Um, first of all, hello to anybody who's watching us on Patreon. If you are a, a, a Patreon, sorry, if you are a patron of ours on Patreon, you'll be able to see us in a full uh, video quality, which is lovely, of course. And um, if you aren't already a member, then please do check out the link in the show notes. Hello to our new patrons, uh, Deanna Hart, Robin Murray and Trevor Smith, who have joined us oh, recently. Hello to them. How nice. Hello, guys. Nice to... And welcome. Sorry if I'm sounding a little bit snuffly and offbeat. I've got um, got the lurgy this week. It's not COVID, which is nice, but um, it is it's still something nice. else, which isn't nice. So, um, yeah, there we are. Well, I mean, you're, as I said earlier, you'll just sound like me. So I'm, I was born and brought up on an estuary and uh, having a slight nasal or but, but, uh, quite a, a, a nasal tone to your uh, your voice is actually uh, sort of uh, well-known uh, uh, sort of, uh, I don't call it an attribute. Um, it's a recognisable vocal trait of those born by the sea. Ah, is it because there of your salty are. nostrils? It's my salty nostrils. Are thought it was. It, it, it be so. That's lovely. As I say, welcome to the, our three new members, and uh, welcome to everyone listening from Tonga to Latvia. Uh, I know we've got uh, uh, some Latvian uh, uh, listeners. Uh, Data, if you're listening, hello. Um, I hope you enjoy the show and happy Christmas to you. And glad to hear all the photographers going well. And to all the other people who've uh, been in touch uh, with me as well, all the usuals, the Helens and the, the Allisons and the Barbaras. And the, I mean, you know, the list goes on. And we <laughs> so appreciate regular listeners to this show. Uh, you've been so loyal and supportive and, and you've stayed with us. So thank you. Big Christmas thanks to you all. Yes, and we have uh, got a special thank you because we are um, going to play later on in the show our uh, special Christmas song, which Moriarty has yeah. put together. I was talking about this last week, I think. He's uh, clipped up some sections of us talking from the past God knows how many episodes and set it all to music. And we've got uh, the song is um, by Moriarty featuring Adam and Bob, and it is called Erm, um, in brackets, Christmas Crime. 
and you'll see why when we get to that. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I think, I think it's very catchy. I think he's done a wonderful job. Whether we'll make number, is there still a Christmas number one? I don't know whether there are. Are they hit sort of? I know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the popular music world particularly no. well, and I don't know whether they still do the the the, the top twenty show. But uh, I don't think we'll get anywhere near it. But I do think we should be represented in some way. I think so, yeah. Let's whack it on iTunes and see what happens. Yeah. Um, but we'll start off uh, our, our um, fun festive Christmas special with um, some <laughs> rather depressing news, actually, that uh, John le Carre um, no, no, died no. Uh, this week at the age of yeah. 89. Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, yeah. <laughs> not the way you want yes. to start a Christmas show, but uh, also we couldn't not talk about this. He um, it said in The Guardian he explored the gap between the West's high-flown rhetoric of freedom and the gritty reality of defending it in novels such as The Spy Who Came In From The Cold, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy and The Night Manager, which gained him critical acclaim, critical acclaim and made him a bestseller around the world. Uh, he died on Sunday, uh, a week ago Sunday, uh, at the Royal Cornwall Hospital. And his family said, we all deeply grieve his passing. Uh, he was born as David Cornwell in 1931, uh, started working for the Secret Services while studying German in Switzerland at the end of the 1940s. He taught at Eton, joined the British Foreign Service as an intelligence officer, uh, looking after spies behind the Iron Curtain. And inspired by his MI5 colleague, novelist John Bingham, he began publishing thrillers under the pseudonym of John le Carre, despite his publisher's advice that he opt for two Anglo-Saxon monosyllables, such as Chunk Smith. So John le Carre <laughs> nearly became known as John Chunk Smith. Well, I, I, he would have still sold as many books. I mean, he, <laughs> I have to say, uh, he was he was my favourite. I just think he is uh, uh, fantastic, and I won't refused to speak to about him in the past participle i mean it's very sad that he's gone but he left uh, so much um and ian McEwen said this week that uh he is probably one of the uh, the preeminent uh, british novelists of the uh, of the 20th century and well into the 21st as well i loved his work um and leave such a fantastic body of, of, of work to read uh, and and reread. And also, of course, his sons have now uh, taken up the banner and uh, translating, adapting his work to television hugely successfully with the hotel manager um, and uh, Little Drum Boy. And, uh, and there's another one coming out next year. I can't recall offhand uh, what title that is. But that was a, a very uh, happy working relationship. So they are moving Le Carre's works uh, into uh, the television sphere as they've always been uh, to some degree but a great great writer um, and uh, his books uh, need to be read and I think reread they hold up so even his early works hold up phenomenally well so uh, yeah John le Carre God bless him rest in peace well, that's the wonderful thing about books isn't it authors never die they are always there the books don't go away uh, uh, yes they are uh, they live uh, for as long as readers read them and uh, and that goes from John le Carre all the way back to 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 to, to Aesop's, Aesop's fables and uh, whatever i mean if you've got a classic tale that will be read through generations mm -hmm. and still relates to the human condition uh, makes people laugh makes people cry tells a, a fascinating story then they'll be read through the centuries they'll come in and out of fashion of course as authors often do but if they're uh, of a stature of someone like uh, John le Carre, uh, then uh, hopefully they will last for as long as uh, mm. as uh, civilization and mankind does. It's not often yeah. Aesop gets a mention on Partners in Crime. Well, you know, there was a little bit of mystery in some of his things. Mm. He had to figure out some some things. You know, he had to figure out who done it, how done it, and whatever. And uh, certainly uh, had to uh, certainly had to figure out the value of the particular fables. Uh, he's not had anything so, out recently, though, is he? Uh, no, no, I don't think he's on Kobo. <laughs> <laughs> he probably is actually. Uh, he probably, probably is. Has, what am I saying? Probably has, I'm pretty sure they're out of copyright now. Yes. Well, it's probably not getting the royalties as much as it should, and I don't know whether the Aesop family, wherever they may be, are sort of waiting <laughs> for those checks to come in twice a year. Yeah. But anyway, good luck to Aesop and all his fables and uh, uh, and onwards. So, yeah, well, uh, I love, a, I love the a idea of Mrs. Stuff. Aesop living off of his estate still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like a like a sort of a Frederick Forsyth character. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think uh, that's that's quite an interesting Christmas. Thing. But anyway, I don't know about your family. I don't know about James and and Joe, but mine are very much looking forward to um, uh, a smaller Christmas. We had arranged yeah. quite the usual big uh, shade doors uh, celebrations here, but of course they've all had to be stripped down to uh, mm. the, the various people not travelling. Mm. Uh, so it's very very sad. We're, none of us are seeing each other uh, in the flesh. Uh, th- this year, but it's a small price to pay, I think, for health. And, I'm, and, I'm and happy safety. with a small Christmas. It's my turn to cook this year, so I'm I'm ah. perfectly happy with, <laughs> with a small Christmas. So yeah, but yeah, it is it is going to be different. Uh, you know, especially with you know three, almost four year old knocking around. It's you know you want yeah. to try and make Christmas as big and as wonderful as possible, but we've got to try and do that. I mean, we were talking last week, weren't we, about how we might be able to record this week's episode together in person, thinking we might go down to tier one, we might be allowed in the same room together, but we're actually now being moved into tier three, yeah. and we're not actually yes. legally allowed to um, speak to each other outside or at one another's doorstep or anything. No, like you, that, you, so. you could. You, I don't think you're even allowed to go into the back garden and shout up to me. Uh. So, uh, although I'd like to see you try. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, yeah, that's that's going to be interesting. Luckily, uh, Santa Claus has got uh, COVID immunities for delivering all the presents on Christmas Day, so the tears mean nothing to him. Mm. Uh, he was the first uh, one up for the vaccine, wasn't he? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, but absolutely, if anyone needs immunity, uh, it is uh, the governor himself. Mm. So, yeah, so that's, uh, and I'm sure everyone uh, that we're talking to, uh, as I say, all around the world, uh, has got the same sort of restrictions. Um, but as ever, uh, we'll we'll get through it. It's been a hell of a year. And talking about the, the, the world of publishing, because this is a crime fiction um, broadcast as it is. I mean, it's been a tough year. I was reading the mm. editor. Uh, in the bookseller this week and uh, they were saying although it looks as if life has been fairly robust for the publishing um uh, business uh, it has taken its toll like any other uh, industry but the good thing is that people have been reading uh, and continue to read and uh, and figures for that uh, seem to grow so they have done all right but other areas of the book selling businesses bookshops and whatever need all the help and support they can possibly get certainly as with so many other uh, businesses on the high street or whatever certainly cafes restaurants pubs etc bookshops they don't know whether they're coming <coughs> or, or, or going whether they're opening and they're closing it's it's very very difficult times for themselves and or, all their employers but uh, we send uh, a christmas greetings to everyone who works in publishing especially of course to kobo uh, that fine publishing outlet, but to everyone uh, uh, as well. We're all in it together and uh, and we all need all the help we can get and we need to support each other, uh, especially at this time of year. But it's a very supportive industry anyway. And very competitive, let's face it, very competitive, but uh, there's a great sense of, of support uh, from the smallest publishers to the indie publishers uh, and even to the, uh, the, the, the grand fromages at the top of the bookselling tree. <laughs> Christmas well- tree. Yes, yes, and, and Merry Christmas to all of them. Um, in fact, if you if you want to cheer yourself up over Christmas, then why not let yourself get in with a chance of winning some wonderful prizes? As I mentioned, yes. um, Kobo have kindly donated a brand new Kobo Nia, uh, which is, I'm looking at it here, valued at $130, would you believe? Uh, wow. It's, it, it's, a, it's got a 6-inch, 212 PPI Carter e-ink display. Uh, it weighs it's 172 high. grams. 132. What? What is that? I don't see. Be, be, that means nothing mm. to me. I, know. I mean, uh, 132 grams. I mean, 172. Uh, okay. Yes, it, it, it's got, light. I've got it's a couple of. Uh, sorry, I was going to say I've got a couple of Kobo e-readers. Not this one. This is their their new one. Um, but yeah, it, it's very good, and you know, it's yours basically. For if you uh, if you win the competition, so why not enter? The uh, the link is in the show notes so make sure you um, have a look at that to so click through and you've got your entry form uh, we have to ask you a question legally you can't just enter because then it's a sweepstake apparently or a, a lottery and not okay. a competition and we um the gambling commission get a bit annoyed so we answer this follow that link <laughs> and uh, let us know the title of last year's partners in crime christmas special which isn't too difficult oh, to find no. out the 2019 episode title please uh, the winner gets that brand new kobo near e-reader and there are three runners up prizes as well one of which is uh, this which i'm holding up for our patreon video viewers my um 
exclusive limited edition gold foiled hardback of Her Last Tomorrow, which came out, um, well, it hasn't actually come out at all, but um, it became available recently. Uh, only 500 copies ever printed. Each one is individually numbered and signed, and you get a little um, hand-signed letter from me as well. You get a gold foiled bookmark, and it all comes nicely Hand wrapped and sealed with a gold wax stamp. So that's one of the runners up prizes. Uh, oh, also, lovely. Bob's throwing in um, oh, yes. a signed hardback of Killing Rock, which he's going to go and get while we look at the uh, teddy bears and mugs on the on the shelf well, behind him. You've shown me yours, I'll show you mine. Uh, here we are. This is yes, we're offering. Uh, can you see it? Where's this best? Ah, possible? wonderful, yeah. Uh, the hardback uh, signed uh, edition uh, is, is one of the runner up prizes uh, signed and all the rest of the thing. Uh, sent in a very nice red envelope with uh, my Christmas uh, stickers. That's it. And oh. as they say, that's one of these coming to. Uh, well, I'm showing you the back now. Uh, one of these coming to you, and the fourth prize is two of these uh, coming to you. So <laughs> <laughs> um, there we um, are. And What's the other prize? Um, well, our our good friends over at Hobeck Books have also donated <laughs> a signed paperback of a brand new book, which isn't actually out until January. Uh, A. B. Morgan's Over Her Dead Body. So yeah, Excellent lots of lots too. of wonderful prizes you can get your hands on. So do follow the link yeah. in the show notes. Um, that will take you to a little Google form that you can fill in. Let us know the name of last year's Partners in Crime Christmas special, the 2019 uh, edition. And pop your name and your email address in there. That will all go through to Moriarty and the computer will pick a winner uh, in the first couple of days of the new year. So entries will close um, stroke of midnight, end of the year. And we'll pick the uh, the winners in the first couple of days and you'll be notified and you can enter from anywhere in the world as well. Kobo, I'm more than happy to send that device to you, whether you're in the Gambia or Latvia or Nicaragua or, or wherever you Guadeloupe, you Guadeloupe. There's no excuse. Uh, uh, not not you Guadeloupe. Are. That's that's one place they said they wouldn't send it, is, is Guadeloupe. <laughs> not keen on Guadeloupe. Why not? <laughs> it's a French predict- well, it's, where they film- it's where they filmed Death in Paradise, isn't it? Uh, um, that might be why. And that might be well, I'm, I'm, I'm catching up. <laughs> Um, in the news this week, <coughs> Megan Hunter, um, she her book The Harpy was one of the books published on um, was it called, what they call it Mad Thursday or Ridiculous Thursday? Really? When, that day when six hundred books were published in one day in September. Slightly September. irritating Wednesday. Yeah, I can't remember That's... what it was, but um, her book was was The Harpy was uh, yeah. released then. She's from Cambridge. It's a, a revenge tale that revolves around Lucy and Jake, a notionally happy married couple with two children who live in a nice house in a nice part of town in an approximation of domestic bliss. Then one day Lucy receives a phone call from a man who tells her his wife has been having an affair with Lucy's husband and the facade irrevocably cracks. Uh, it's called The Harpy and she was um, Megan Hunter was talking about it in an interview this week. She says, um, uh, I'm thinking of having a T-shirt made saying this isn't about me. I can't help but feel that a male crime writer wouldn't have people wondering whether he himself was a serial killer. Apparently people keep asking her if it's real. <laughs> and if she, if she based this on her her own life, which is, is interesting. I mean, has she got a point, do you think, Bob, that you know people don't ask male crime writers whether they're serial killers? Uh, I think she has got a point, quite frankly. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. It, it reminds you? me of the time. Yes, I, well, I do. Yeah, and but I, I I had a similar experience myself. I think I mentioned it on the podcast before, and um, I think I did the Milton Keynes Literary Festival about a year or two ago. And you rogue, you you rogue, know, you devil. I know all, all the exotic locations I get sent to, <laughs> and um, I I was being interviewed there, and afterwards a, a woman you know, did did a sort of signing at the, the Waterstone stool afterwards, and a woman came up to me and she said, um, she said, I just wanted to say. Um, you, you you seem like a really nice man. I said, oh, thank you very much. And she said, yes, I, I was surprised by that. I said, oh, thank you. Did you not expect me to be nice? And she said, well, all of the, the, the stuff you write, all of that death and destruction, I, I expected you to be quite a, a nasty character. I thought, well, it's not real. It's <laughs> nice people can write can write bad things. That's always kind of stuck with me. It was um, an odd thing, and we actually had quite a long chat about why I write about death and destruction and through joint psychoanalysis we worked out it's because I'm actually 
petrified of death and can't handle it and can't deal with it. So this is my way of processing it through, through writing, which is interesting. And what the hell are you doing with your glasses? I don't know. They've got a bit. They've got a bit wobbly, haven't they? I mean, it's an interesting point because, <clears throat> as I said, I mean, I can remember years ago it got into the Sunday Times uh, that uh, I was walking through. A, I was um, in casualty at the time, playing the manager Simon Eastman, and uh, who was a rather nasty, brutal person who went around sat- s- sacking everyone. And I got beaten up by a couple of old ladies <laughs> in the in the uh, Bristol shopping centre. Um, you don't expect to ha- have um, grey-haired old ladies swinging handbags at you with with violent intent but it happened to me so there is that sense of, of you know same with you people think that you're like the character you're playing on television or people think that you are very much like the the characters you write about not true it, as as you say it's fiction but uh, i understand why people some people anyway um uh, sort of uh, make that make that mistake but uh, so yeah well anyway i'm going to go into sophie hannah now uh, mm. uh, carrying on this theme that we've had sorry about my glasses it's Wearing a hat, I'm wearing a Christmas hat, a bobble hat, oh. and I'm wearing earphones, and I've got to slip my glasses on at the same time, and you end up looking I, like. Oh. I, I spent far too much time before we were recording here trying to work out whether the headphones go on over the Christmas hat, or the Christmas hat goes on over the headphones, and well, I where the bobble seconds. goes, and all this stuff. I had three seconds, and uh, <laughs> and and it doesn't half show. Right, well, Sophie Hannah, as I said, we've been highlighting uh, in the lead up to Christmas books uh, that we recommended through the year, and uh, as I said last week, there's no better time for Agatha Christie uh, than sitting reading uh, the great lady's works uh, around a nice fire at Christmas time. And uh, her latest book is the. She's uh, her Hercule Poirot series, which she's done absolutely brilliantly, bringing Hercule Poirot back to literary life uh, once more. Uh, the world's greatest detective, Hercule Poirot, legendary star of Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express and Death on the Nile, returns to solve another fiendish new mystery. Hercule Poirot is travelling by luxury uh, passenger coach from London to the exclusive King Fisher Hill estate. Richard Davenport has summoned him to prove that his fiancée Helen is innocent of the murder of his brother Frank. There is one strange condition attached to this request, and isn't there always with an Agatha Christie? Poirot must conceal his true reason for being there from the rest of the Davenport family. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, uh, book, this. Uh, uh, you've uh, been recommended uh, before, but look at all uh, Sophie Hannah's uh, books on, on Kobo or uh, whatever platform you're using or your local bookshop or what, whatever. They're all fantastic reads. Uh, and as I mentioned uh, several times, big hits in, in, in Latvia too. And this latest version, which I think was published in August, uh, is uh, as, as good as any of them. Uh, she keeps on getting better and better, in, in fact. So that's Sophie Hannah, who I found out out today point of interest has been uh, 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 part of uh, uh, getting a new degree course at Cambridge University for crime and thriller writers Mm. which it's a two-year course uh, apparently um, for people who want to actually study crime and thriller so uh, obviously I've I've got uh, the prospectus for both of us and uh, and uh, we just have to fill in our form and turn up on the day so well, um, I mean that's that's not actually necessary for me because uh, you might remember you might not but a couple of years ago I was actually given a doctorate for that and I, I had to do no study at all so there That's we go. absolutely true. You, you are a doctor. I'm officially Doctor Adam Croft. Yeah, thank you yes. to the University of Bedfordshire for that. Oh, well, uh, well, there for, you, are. For you don't need to it. You don't have to believe, a, a, apply. Is... I'll just stand in line. But anyway, it, <laughs> the point I'm making is, um, Sophie's been involved in this and, and, and well done uh, for, for that. But also, it's great that uh, the University of Cambridge there is now a degree uh, specifically for crime and thriller writers. So there we are. I think that's reflecting the age in which we live and the success of that particular genre. But anyway, Hercule Poirot, Sophie, Hannah, of course, go back and read uh, the the great lady, Agatha Christie's uh, uh, original uh, Poirot's. But if you have read those and watched all the televisions and the films, then these new books are an absolute must. Happy Segway Christmas. Segway opportunity. Uh, well, we're talking about uh, Sophie Hannah, of course, as you know, she now writes the Poirot books, as you were saying, and uh, a newspaper, uh, National Geographic, in fact, their website, they carried um, an article recently, six destinations every Agatha Christie fan should visit. Oh, wow. They, um, they said Torquay, her birthplace and home to the annual International Agatha Christie Festival, uh, Greenway House, which is a holiday home and personal uh, retreat. She I've been it there, the- it's beautiful. 
Yeah. Go there. She, it's she, absolutely brilliant. Well, she called Sorry. it the loveliest place in the world. So It is. I think yeah. it's so absolutely sensational. And you can go and stay there. I think it's part of the National Trust. I it went is. down and did the Agatha Christie Festival. So you can stay in parts of it in the house, in little lodges around the uh, around the, by the river. It's sensational. So, yes, go. Mm. Sorry, Adam, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I did. <laughs> Such is life. Oh, well, there we go. Um, <laughs> Egypt, they said as well. She um, had a very strong affinity with the country based that death comes as the end and death on the Nile, of course, in Egypt. Yes. Um, they also recommend Harrogate, which um, when she mysteriously disappeared in 1929, she was actually found in Harrogate at the Old Swan Hotel, which is then known as the Swan Hydro, with no recollection of how she got there, or so she said. But that is now where the Harrogate Crime Writing Festival is held, for those reasons, essentially. Istanbul, they said. Rumour has it that room 411 of Pera Palace Hotel in Istanbul is where Christy Penn murder on the Orient Express. And Berg Island, which is the setting for two of her novels, and then there were none and evil under the sun. It's reached via a narrow strip of land during low tide, and once water levels rise, can only be accessed aboard a one-of-a-kind hydraulic sea tractor. There were words you didn't think you'd hear in this episode. Hydraulic sea tractor. Well, um, you know, life's a constant surprise, isn't it? It is. So anyway, can I can I segue from that very quickly? Paul yeah. Heron, as as I mentioned every week in Killing Times, is uh, looking at Nordic noir television, um, and there's a new television series being made uh, in the Nordics, and um, and I'll read what they have to say about it. Agatha Christie is an enduring force in crime fiction and on TV. Now we have a new Christie-based series from Svidan. According to Expressen, Agatha Christie's Sven Hirsen is the first TV series that is freely based on Agatha Christie's stories and murder mysteries and is described as a modern, playful and exciting puzzle detective with a twinkle in her eye. Johan Reborg will play Sven Hirsen and Hannah Alstrom will play his sidekick Clara Sandberg a former trash TV producer who success successfully pitches a true-life crime show starring Hirson, who will solve a real crime each week. Svi Hirson was a character invented by the writer Ari Adney Oliver, a character from the Christie novels. Um, mm. So any aficionado of Christie's work will know that, played on television by Zoe Wanamaker, I seem to recall. The channel says that four films are on the slate and will transmit in 2021 on the Swedish channel Seymour. No UK producer broadcast has been announced yet, but there will be one soon, you can guarantee that. A spokesperson for the channel says to be able to take on something as ancient as parts of Agatha Christie's uh, literary universe and turn it into a TV series is a dream. This is a big challenge and I'm so proud that we have entrusted uh, uh, managed to uh, well, I'm not going to read the rest of it, but it basically means that they're, they're absolutely chuffed to bits that they've, they've managed to they pull it off. But anyway, so that comes hard on the heels of the, the, the uh, interesting story you told about Agatha Christie being mm. uh, adapted into Indian uh, yeah. uh, 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 stories as well. So the, the, the Agatha Christie industry is, uh, spreads out across the world once more uh, and so that's Sweden and India, where we'll be looking forward to new adaptations, uh, television adaptations uh, of uh, her work or in the manner of Agatha Christie. Well, we are nearly done. We are going to have very shortly a Moriarty <laughs> featuring Adam and Bob, um, Christmas Crime, our uh, Christmas song for 2020. Uh, but if you want to stock up on your reading over the Christmas period, then head over to Kobo.com. And as a listener to Partners in Crime, if you've not bought an ebook from them before, you can enter the promo code CRIME at the checkout and they'll give you 90% off of your first ebook purchase from them. And if you're an existing customer, you can follow the link in the show notes and yeah. use the promo code PARTNERS for 40% off. And you can use that again and again for effectively almost half price reading forever, which is very lovely of, of Kobo to do that. And yeah, also. Well, as I was saying earlier, they've also donated one of their brand new e-readers, the Kobo Nia, um, for a prize for our Christmas competition, as well as a signed hardback edition of Her Last Tomorrow, Bob's Killing Rock hardback, and a signed paperback of A.B. Morgan's Over Her Dead Body, courtesy of Hobeck. All of those prizes you can win um, again. Look in the show notes. There's a link there to the competition entry form. All you need to do is tell us the title of our last year's 2019 Christmas special. Yes, and I'm sure you all know it because I can't remember it at all. I had to uh, look it up. 
<laughs> well, well, so we'll be going into Arsenal and Old Lace soon, where I'm going to be mentioning a, a, a fantastic new uh, thriller writer called Lewis Hastings, uh, who's uh, brought out a trilogy, uh, which is, uh, at the moment, it's brand new, it's available at hobeck.net um, and all good platforms uh, throughout the uh, the coming year. So I'll be mentioning that and we'll be mentioning all sorts of other interesting insights. The new Karen Slaughter I uh, want to mention as well, which is a, a, a fantastic read and lots of exciting things coming up, which we'll, I dare say we're saving for the New Year show. Uh, authors publishing uh, their works, including Robert Goddard's got a fantastic new book coming out uh, in the New Year as well. So we'll be saving those, I guess, for uh, the first show of twenty. 21. I can't quite believe I'm saying that. Mm. Adam, 2021. I mean, we were young when we started this, weren't we? I, I mean, yeah, you, were, well, yeah. you were considerably younger than me, it has to be said. Well, but even I recall sort of not having quite so many grey hairs. Well, it, indeed, it was, it was hairs January 2018, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't think we would get to February. Ah, oh, so, uh, well, there we are. In that respect, <laughs> once again, we give ourselves a, a pat on a pat on the shoulder. Yeah. So you're you're cooking Christmas uh, uh, dinner. Are you, when do you? Ah, oh, is it Christmas lunch or do you have Christmas dinner? When do you when do you take your main meal of the Christmas day, Adam Croft? I I settle that argument by doing it slap bang in the middle at about half past three. Yeah, I think most people do. I think that's what they aim to. It's got a different a different feel about it Christmas day to any others. What are yeah. you having this year? Um, are you having a turkey? Are you having a turkey? Or are you it's, going... it's a turkey, yes. Oh. I haven't got it yet. It is. Um, it will be Ooh. picked up from the butchers. Oh, you've um, ordered it? A day or... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all taken care of, but I haven't got it here yet. But yeah. um, I did get a new fridge the other day, actually, so uh, that'll be going in there. New oh, fridge freezer. See, Excitement you know, adult life. I, I, can you imagine the excitement our listeners have when they I hear know. this sort of jolly banter? Adam's got a new fridge and he's going to put in his turkey. I mean, mm. this is the stuff that you need, isn't it? This is, is this is the stuff that keeps people tuning in to Partners in Crime. Well, um, it's, it's the stuff I, I can't write. I can't rival that for boredom, actually. I mean, I'm, I, 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 I'm sure I could try, <laughs> but I'm, I'm not going to. I think that's a, that's a, a, a wonderful, wonderful image. And Good. you cooking. Do you wear an apron? Um, yes. Do you wear Why anything not? at all? You no, know, just the apron. Just the apron, just I think. I, I, why, why did I know? So, in actual fact, you cook Christmas dinner like you do your summer barbecues. Just the apron and a couple of tassels. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we, um, before we lose any listeners, <coughs> he says coughing his guts up. Oh, not COVID, not COVID. Um, shall we have a listen? We'll end our show, our Christmas special, with um, with our songs. So very Merry Christmas to everybody listening and watching. Thank you for all of your support. We're very much looking forward to going into our fourth year. Uh, on on the airwaves, on the internet waves, on the the megabits, <laughs> on the megabits, on the megabits. Yes. Yeah. So, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas to you, Bob, and to your your family. And um, you need to come and pick up your book at some point. Yeah, I'll I'll cer- have... I certainly will. When we I'll have to leave it on the doorstep clear. because I'm not allowed to see you. <laughs> Merry Christmas uh, to you, Joe and James, and uh, and all the other attending family uh, or whatever. So, I mean, certainly from Shay Dawes and Shay Croft, it's a oh 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 Merry Christmas, everyone! And uh, as Bob tucks into the eggnog, there we'll leave you with Moriarty featuring Adam and Bob with Erm Christmas Crime. Start it recording now. There we go. Mine's off. Yeah, mine's off too. <clears throat> Here we go. The temperature has dropped. Yes, I'm guessing it's probably not a happy Christmas. We've had a few uh, jolly dinner parties. Marvellous. The temperature has dropped. Yes, I'm guessing it's probably not a happy Christmas. We've had a few uh, jolly dinner parties. Here we go. Marvellous. It's, uh, it's, uh... Christmas? Yeah, it's it's uh, Christmas. It's very, very, very jolly. Um, Christmas. Marvellous. Yes, that's right. And having a marvellous time. Christmas crime. Oh, yeah. Marvellous. Christmas crime. Ah, uh, yes. <whistles> Baby. Um, Christmas. Christmas crime. Um, Christmas. Christmas crime. Um, Christmas. Christmas crime. Um, Christmas. Marvellous. Um, Christmas. Christmas crime. Um, Christmas. Christmas crime. Um, Christmas. Christmas crime. Um, Christmas. Marvellous. It's a very jolly Christmas. Yeah, I start drinking very, very heavily. Ah, yes. Christmas.
It's lovely Christmas. And having a marvellous time. Ah, oh, yes. Baby. There we go. Do you want another drink? Yes. It's uh, Christmas. I love, I love mouthful as well. It's uh, Christmas. It does mean I've got to buy you a ruddy present. Yes, that's right. And having a marvellous time. Christmas crime. Oh, yeah. Marvellous Christmas crime. Ah, uh, yes. Baby. Um, Christmas. Christmas crime. Um, Christmas. Christmas crime. Um, Christmas. Christmas crime. Um, Christmas. Um, Christmas. Christmas crime. Um, Christmas. Christmas crime. Um, Christmas. Christmas crime. Um, Christmas. One more time. Um, Christmas. Christmas crime. Um, Christmas. Christmas crime. Um, Christmas. Christmas crime. Um, Christmas. There we go. But uh, anyway, so and wishing all the marvellous time. Yeah. Do you, do, you, do you have any more? No. That's it. Thank God for that. What a pair of twats. Well, that's what we, 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 we triumph in that particular area of our lives, and that's, that's better than nothing. We do. We do. Do I need to do a separate audacity for this?